Welcome back to Metal Gear Solid. All right, so now we're in the furnace. Still got the bandana on. Out. And snake's not on fire. Out from the cold. Out from the. Okay, so this is literally the opposite of. Well. Out of the freezer and into the frying pan. Okay, okay, okay. If we're in like a smelting area, then that's not necessarily lava, but molten iron. Well, anything with that kind of hot temperature should have at least emanating, you know, a, a radiance of heat. Uh, of some yeah. kind, at least. I mean, uh, hey, hey, think of it this way. Um, if if um, State gets any closer, at least he can... Um, it's like that bit in one of them unusual suspect videos. He can at least uh, pretend he's the human torch. <laughs> for a little bit. I guess I mean, he'll so. He'll die, but um, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love the um, I love um, I love the guards is uh, weirdly repeating death screams in this. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's he doing? Is he um, a snake just shaking him like this while he chokes? Him? I'm I'm willing to bet that the the the, the soldier grunts are probably recorded by Konami employees because uh, maybe probably. I, mean, I mean yeah because you don't um, sometimes um, sometimes even when you do full English sometimes you leave bits and pieces of Japanese recording in there because it works. Mm -hmm. Not to mention this game was already uh, probably quite costly even in terms of its localization considering all the voice actors because remember most of the time. Uh, most of the time, back in these days, even back in the PS1, there's a lot of times there would be uh, games where the voice acting would be done by either even cheap voice actors on the cheaper side, or the or the developers of the game themselves. Because uh, remember, um, if you go back to the early localizations of his attorney for the original for the first four games, um, the vo the English voices were done by employees of, Cap of Capcom America. Uh, ben Judd himself voiced Phoenix back in those days. Yeah. I so. mean, even even mm -hmm. the um, even 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 some of the Mega Man games, not specifically the not, not specifically the developers, but they but for most but for quite a few of the Mega Man games, specifically Mega Man's um, eight, X four, and X seven, um, they had um, they had uh, actors who were living in Japan that spoke English doing the um, voice acting. Honestly, mm -hmm. to give them credit, in a lot of those cases, those voice actors could be good. But granted, it would sometimes take them more training than, you know, say, with, well, like, thing, just the, the, uh, your typical Japanese. actors overall. But okay. uh, they could still they were, they were like, work with it. I should say they were like, they were like American expatriates who moved to Japan. Yeah, yeah actually, yeah, it, 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 it kind of worked like that in the King's Quest series, because remember, even though King's Quest VI, unlike five. Uh, which uh, all the voices in five were done by Sierra employees for King's Quest uh, six. They got an all-star cast like Ro like Robbie Benson, uh, Tony J, as well as plenty of other talented voice actors. But they kept uh, Josh Mandel as the voice of Graham for the ending. Um, Not if he had collaborated before and with Sierra, but these was that was actually one of the early games that Dave Finoy actually worked on. Mm -hmm. Um, and the shopkeeper. and again, uh, and again, remember, like originally the VJ, the VGA fan remakes that we played of King's Quest One and Two and Three weren't even they weren't even planned to have voice acting because they figured, like, uh, we can't really we don't really have the proper, we, it wouldn't sound that particularly authentic and great. But then when someone in the forums told, hey guys, I had the contact of Josh Mandel, uh, and I think we might be able to get him to voice for the Graham for the game, and that entire one thing changed their whole stance on the whole voice acting thing oh okay if we can have the original gram in it then that changes the whole equation because we can't pass on that opportunity which again it worked out for the better for the game anyway so because josh mm -hmm. because oh. jo because fan because king's quest fans just like um to them it's like josh mandel's was it's just the gram voice so it really becomes one of the not 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 the no, just but the josh kitten josh kitten was great in the reimagining it's just that when it comes to og gram from the original timeline yeah i like it really it really it, it really feels right to just have josh mandel in the remix go on yeah i mean I'll give the actors in the original Ace Attorney credit. Apparently, they had to do several different takes on those lines to get them just right. And despite them not really being all... Well, okay, you know what? I'm not going to say that none of them were professionals, but, you know, 
Obviously, compared to the newer cast they got, not as big time, but honestly, surprisingly enough, their takes on those particular lines have been considered the most iconic uh, by a long shot for a lot of the characters. Well, yeah, usually. And Jed, especially as Phoenix. Yeah, usually when people make some kind of Phoenix Wright parody or something and they have the objection bit, they always pull it from the original games rather than the new ones. Like, I mean, Sam Regal is great as Phoenix. But most of the time, people would just use Ben Judd's take on objection rather than Phoenix. And I can kind of get it. There's just something about Ben Judd's take on objection that is amazingly iconic. Like, yeah. you know, it's the right pitch, it's the right tone. It just gets everything incredibly right. Mm hmm. Jesus, how many, how much health do these guards have? Uh, uh well, I mean, the closer. Well, see, oh, there you go. Here. You're supposed to eat them. The closer. The closer we get to the main boss, the more advanced the guards get, and therefore they might be wearing more advanced body armor. Very good, uh, Dips. Yes, sir. Yeah, of, of course, but, uh, you know, again, it was more of a case of, you know, compared to even the, the guys from, from you know, just the previous level, you know, um, they seem to have soaked enough bullets, uh, but, you know, but uh, they still will not go down. I guess. You know, throwing them out is a recommended strategy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, like this. Like, like so. Alright. Let's continue. You know, Zane, between before and this one, you probably should stop taking elevators. Yeah, probably. Or what if he wants to just have a rest from before? <laughs> I have nano machines. He can handle the cardio. All right. I mean, I mean, just for me, nano machines can't fix everything. Okay. Are you sure about that? <laughs> yes, I am sure. <laughs> okay. Can can we actually help me move out of the couch? No, no, he can do that himself. The lazy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, strength nano machines would probably help with that. Okay. Just stand up. You need other machines. Fuck. Whoa, <laughs> mine. Mine. Yeah. All right. For my goggles. For my goggles. For my goggles. <laughs> At the very least, we don't pull the trick that was. I think it was in the first one, first game, until gear game, where um, they give you the electric electrified, uh, you know, uh, floor, and you're supposed to just wing it and run it while consuming rational rations. So you have these wonderful image of snake. In order to not to die while being electrocuted, eating while he's running. <laughs> Alright. I mean, that's the way you can dispatch your targets in, um, in, 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 in Hitman, but there's also the risk of you potentially running into that thing yourself if you're not careful. Eating while being electrocuted? No, Pro being electrocuted in general. <laughs> Like, it does take a bit. You have to um, loosen the wire and also throw water on the bit where, you're where you want the guy to be electrocuted. And yeah, you just gotta be careful you don't hit that bit yourself, otherwise you will die. Mm hmm. More elevators, fantastic. Well, we are going down into the underground. How, how deep is this uh, the Metal Gear docking bay? Well, I, 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 they obviously had it underground so that it won't show up on radars and stuff like that. Just to keep okay, it hidden. Well, so, well, I think, well, I think ooh, I will. This say, sound is uh, peculiar. More right, ravens. Well, although, uh, one thing I will say, if we're comp I know this isn't technically the first game of the overall series. Hold on, Dibs. Yeah. This is an important kind of call. There are a lot of crows around here. Mm hmm. Those aren't crows, those are northern ravens. Oh. Worship northern ravens as creator deities. Some say that ravens have the power to predict death. The great poet Marlowe wrote about them hmm. in the 16th century. Thus, like the sad presaging raven that tolls the sick man's passport in her hollow beak, and in the shadow of the silent night doth shake contagion on her sable wings. That's pretty gloomy, Master. By the way, what? I've got something to tell you about Naomi Hunter. What about her? Oh boy. Is this conversation secure? Don't worry, the monitor's off. Okay. What's up? I was in the FBI too, you know. I didn't know that. 
What's your point? Dr. Hunter's story about her background, about her grandfather being an assistant secretary to Hoover in the FBI. Yeah. And then going undercover to investigate the Mafia in New York. Yeah, what about it? It was all a big lie. Uh. What did you say? It was really bothering me. Why would she lie about it? She lied? She might be a spy. Ridiculous. Come on, even a high school student could see past it. The head of the FBI at that time, Edgar Hoover, he was a well-known racist. Didn't they only say... As portrayed by Leonardo Japanese? DiCaprio. <laughs> yeah. Well, back then there wasn't a single Asian investigator. Also, in the 1950s, the undercover mafia sting operations hadn't even started mm. yet. You know, Naomi, shows, uh, you know, Naomi, maybe you shouldn't have made a false backstory that could literally be debunked by anyone who has probably gotten their good marks in history. Too many strange things are happening. Are you that is true. That Naomi might be behind it? I don't know. Either that, or she's working with the terrorists. Could it be? If I find out anything, I'll call. In the meantime... Be careful. That's mm. very ominous. Okay. Uh, is there anything? Hey, Colonel, where's Naomi? I'm right here, Snake. Uh. Oh, uh, nothing. Forget it. Strange. Uh. <laughs> Snake, by now those terrorists have finished their launch preparations. Stop wasting time. Okay then. Uh, that awkward time. time. We're gonna start eating without you. Uh, Nastasha, what do you have to say about <laughs> all this? As long as the strategy of nuclear deterrence continues, nuclear weapons... Alright, listen here, this is important. ...but they will never be eliminated. If you think about it, nuclear reduction does not mean much without elimination as the ultimate goal. I used to work in the DIA. I figured the only way to achieve nuclear elimination was to work from the inside to convince them of the ineffectiveness of the deterrence theory. Seems like you're pretty focused on that issue. Victims of nuclear radiation are a mm. sad thing to see. And I have seen a lot of it. I have seen more than enough of it. I was born and raised in Pripyat, Ukraine. Oh, I, I forgot about this. April 26, 1986. Chernobyl? You don't mean. Yep. Yes, Chernobyl. That is the day that changed my life and thousands of other lives. I live just three kilometers north of there. 600,000 to 700,000 people were evacuated. Over 650,000 children suffered the effects of radiation poisoning. Between 1986 and 1993, 12,000 children died. My parents and many others like them who helped in the cleanup died a few years later from radiation sickness. We must rid this world of all nuclear weapons before they cause more misery, before they destroy the delicate environment that keeps us alive. I will not allow this pain and anxiety to pass on to yet another generation. And now you know why Nastasha is so dedicated uh, to her job and why she committed herself to knowing so much about it and, and, you know, again, working on the inside to try to, you know, work towards that goal of hers. And yes, that, right, that backstory is the reason why I had that disclaimer at the beginning, because, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> so there you go, she's Ukrainian. <laughs> there are a lot of ravens here. There were ravens around from before. Yes, pray to God that they haven't been experimented on by Umbrella. Those ravens are a nasty bit of work. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, as I was, was going to say earlier before we did the codec conversations, um, if we're comparing first installments of stealth franchises, I mean, I know this isn't technically the first installment, but it is the first one of the MGS series, i.e. the most well-known one of the bunch. Mm -hmm. um, if, we're, if I'm comparing... This to Hitman, which came out two years later. Um, I have to say, this is definitely the better game. Um, Wait, is the first is the first Hitman game bad? Okay, it came out in two thousand. It was a PC exclusive. 
and it was developed by um well well a European developer. Uh. And it has an unfortunate case of um what people call Euro jank. In that oh. they, in that in that developers are trying really, really hard to with something that isn't with, with technology that just isn't there yet. So like basically it's it's not even it's not so much over the shoulder as much as it's behind the guy's back with the camera with the camera so high up you're only able to see the guy's like back in his head hmm. and the controls are really really awkward it's, it's it's like it's worse than tank control have they tried like, maybe yeah. making a remake of it to you know solve that like, to, to, to finish my point you have to turn really hard just to move and go all around the place plus you have to worry about stealth and shooting mm. and everything and, and the voice acting even from the main guy who to be fair has gotten a lot better since he's been with the series since the start is um pretty bad <laughs> and um to answer your question to you pedro sorry they did kind of do a remake of it in the um, hitman contract where they basically took most of the levels from the first game and redid them with a more usable control scheme hmm interesting but um but uh we're completionists here so um when we eventually when we eventually do the series i'm going to be doing that game as long as i can get it to still work on my pc should be interesting well, good, good old does gog.com have it i got it off steam oh it's on steam okay. vulcan what are you wearing uh, Nothing up top. Heavy machine gun too. If Dingo Dal gave that to you, it must have been a tight fit for a big boy like you. Oh. <laughs> you insult me, Snake. But that was no true battle. Oh. True battles are fought with giant machine guns. What kind of man you were? The judgment is decided. The ravens say you are a true warrior. That's good. Um. Yeah. That's bad. Snake, at this point, you should expect every anything. I can't move. The Raven has put the mark of death upon you. That's really bad. Flows within your veins. Uh, God, no. Ancestors too were raised on the barren plains of Mongolia. Well, we all share a common ancestor to begin with, anyway. So. Yes, snakes. Indeed, ravens and snakes are not the best of friends. Nevertheless, you will make a worthy adversary. You live in Alaska too. You know of the World Eskimo Indian Olympics? Yeah, I know it. it must be a real threat in the muck duck eating contest. <laughs> yes, you are right. But there is another event that I excel at. Uh, log dancing. Ear oh. pull. It is an event where two opponents pull each other's ears while enduring the harsh cold. It tests spiritual as well as physical strength. You want to pull each other's ears? The form is different, but the spirit is the same. Uh, Joy, snake. Ours will be uh, yeah, this is totally the same thing as pulling on each other's ears. I'm a snake on this one. All right, so the boss battle against Vulcan Raven is uh, simple at first. Okay, so one particular. I'd say teleported to a bit far away. Uh, yeah. Fuck. You blew yourself up. My bad. Let me try that again. Let's try that again. <laughs> okay, so uh, at first, okay, we had the Nikita missiles, which remember we can control. So we, this can be a good weapon to use because remember, like uh, if Vulcan sees you. Well, the problem is, Vulcan is much smarter than your typical boss battle. Uh, he will be, uh, like, uh, if he's in a particular position, he can potentially, yeah, see the missile coming and shoot at it, making it explode. So, uh, it, it can... You need to probably get him from behind and zoom in the rocket. That being said, speed. that being said, there you go, see, as you can see, you can still hurt him despite that. Like, and again, if you manage to position your shots properly, you can hurt him using the Nikita missile. It's only later when he goes into berserk mode, kind of, that uh, it becomes more of a. There you go. See. Usually, what I do is like, well, I memorize where he. Well, not so much memorize. I use the map 
to gauge where he is, but basically, I do the missile slowly until it's close enough where he may get alerted, in which case then I just zoom it in so that it hits him before he has time to react. Uh, sometimes it's also a matter of getting down, you know, controlling the missile the entire time while it's uh, speeding up, which can be a bit tough to Fuck. do, but once you get it, you got it. Yeah. Uh, another way we can beat him, and I will do that myself later, is uh, apply the same logic we, we did with Running Man in the previous game. You, you can place landmines and try to attract into the place where you put in the landmines. Since the landmines are not visible to the naked eye, he will not be able to see them. Fuck. Yeah, you don't want to pull out the missiles when his bullets are streaming in the area right as you're about to put it out. Otherwise, that'll just cause it to explode right in front of you. Alright, let's see. Come on, Vulcan. Alright, so basically, this boss battle is basically one big game of cat and mouse, basically. Essentially. Vulcan's the cat and I'm the mouse. Certainly because ravens sometimes prey on snakes. Fuck. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's continue. Um, yeah, that's the, basically it. You just play a game of cat and mouse with him, basically. It kind of works like one of those. Um, it it kind of works like again, very much like a metal. Uh, uh, one of the two D Metal Gear bosses, like because usually the boss battles in this game definitely have more like definitely different gimmicks to them than the two D Metal Gear games. But this boss battle feels like it comes straight out of a two D Metal Gear game, definitely, um, because it makes. Because it's mostly done via a pl like a flat um, plane, like there's not any much use of the, the, the 3D capabilities of the game. And it, this this is the kind of boss battle that could have been perfectly done on Metal Gear 2, since it it's entirely played without any kind of 3D capabilities on it. Like I said, we can pretty much defeat him using the same strategy we did for Running Man. Yeah, the guy apparently has amazing ears. Since you can hear the missile from that far away, from that far away. Again, we're operating. To be fair, it is on... a pretty loud boom when it explodes. We're also operating on night wolf logic of the stereotype of a Native American with so in communion with the animal spirits. So. Mm -hmm. Wait, I'm pretty sure he's not a Native American, given what he mentioned about his heritage. Okay, let me try. I think it's like a. I think, I think it's like an Eskimo from Alaska or something that he said. Um. Anyway, regardless, uh, and yeah, that's why, uh, anyway, yeah, that's, so there you go, I, 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 that's why I was uh, saving it for when she actually does say this, yeah. Nastasha is actually Ukrainian, and she was a victim of Chernobyl, like we have said. There we go. Um, half, uh, half native Alaskan American and half Inuit, that's why also the reference to the, the Olympic Games. Alright. Yeah, but uh, but yeah. Um, unfortunate timing aside, I do have to really compliment uh, uh, the game for also going out of its way to still give Nastasha a really good backstory that explains why she's as knowledgeable and dedicated to her work as she is. You know, because it gives all her it, all her trivia throughout the game a, a whole new meaning. You know, like um, it turns her from a from a fun trivia box to an actual person who has an actual reason for being uh, for for you know for being the way that she is she wasn't even kidding about how the repercussion of the chernobyl accident you know was uh, um while certainly more for the people involved including you know the people from the area where she was from and everything most of the rest of europe also was at least at least asking for the other europeans i don't know if your parents ever told you but uh, the common thing that happened at the time that basically all the European countries asked to do was to impose a strict restriction on what you were supposed to eat, uh, the timing of the day on which you were supposed to keep your uh, window open, because there was a chance, uh, you know, that the radiation could have been blown away towards the towards the west. So it was it was still a troublesome time even for those far away. Mm -hmm. And yeah, another thing, another thing about this area is that uh, it also introduces another aspect from that returns from Metal Gear 2, 
we're in a frozen environment, which means that your rations that you're carrying on you can get frozen. Meaning, uh, after a while, the rations that you have on you will become unusable. So, basically, think of this boss battle as kind of an endurance match as well, because uh, you have to try your best to um, beat the boss without necessarily having all the, the, the healing you could have had otherwise. So, yeah, be careful. And yeah, at, once you get... So, cigarettes can warp time, but you can't defrost your food? You can defrost your food, Shiroi, but uh, you need to go to a hot place, like the furnace we were just in. Yeah. Also, Shiro, it's pretty much established at this point that the, the laws of the universe where regulate this particular, you know, franchise are bizarre, to say the least. It's a it, it, it's one of the, not to mention Shiro, remember, in this particular game, cigarettes can only make you see, um, lasers. Or infrared, sorry, infrared lasers, sorry, infrared lasers. Um, but yeah, I, there, there you go. go. There we go. Got him. I will be watching you in spirit form. Take this security card. It will open that door. Cool, thanks. Sir. Why? You are a snake which was not created by nature. Foreshadowing. You and the mm -hmm. boss. You are from another world. It turns out <laughs> you're actually from a world where everything was oh, turned into zombies with the nanomachines. <laughs> I mean, technically, if Metal Gear survive, yeah, interdimensional travel is a thing in this universe. Oh, yeah. No, I, I, honestly, it's not even so much that I... Uh, well, whatever, I didn't know you were in about to survive. There you go. And now, uh, Dweb's uh, can pat yourself in the back in a moment. Very good, Dweb. Very good, Dweb's. It was indeed not the Dapper Chief. It was actually Decoy Octopus. That's why he never showed up. It was right under our noses. Uh, the best hidden secret. Which explains that uh, that decomposed body we found in, the, in our jail cell, that was the real DARPA chief, who has actually been dead for days. In fact, he drained the chief's blood as well. To assume the identity. Yep. Why impersonate the chief? <laughs> that is the end of my hint. You must solve the rest. That was a pretty good hint, all things considered. Well, Joba, look at it this way: better hint than that stupid computer telling us the Lord and Blue Dragon. So, where's that? Talk it to you. They just walk away. Well, to be fair, I don't cool think he wants to see the rip. Cool guys don't, don't look at the ending of We're Back for Dinosaurs in New York. <laughs> well, seriously, what even was that bit? Well, I can't hear you. I'm too far away. He's still good for a guy who was got eaten alive by ravens. Huh, well, you know, that took half the time, only like three minutes. And look at that! Just like in, we're back at Dinosaur's Tale. Well, it's gone. the plus side, it would mean only Ocelot should still be alive. It's me, Master. And, well, Ocelot's kind of uh, oh, Naomi. disarmed. Oh, Naomi. Colonel, is uh. Naomi there? No, she's, <sighs> away. she's taking a short nap. Hmm. So, what is this about Naomi? Okay. Maybe we better let the colonel hear this too. Probably. Yeah. Go on, master. 
Well, basically, Dr. Naomi Hunter is not Dr. Naomi Hunter at all. What? I thought her story of her background sounded kind of fishy, so I checked it out. And? There is an actual Dr. Naomi Hunter, or I should say, there was one. But she's not the woman we know. The real Naomi Hunter disappeared somewhere in the Middle East. Our Naomi must have somehow obtained her identification papers. So then, who is she really? Mm. She must be some kind of... spy. A spy? Yes. Maybe she's been sent to sabotage this operation. You know, if we hadn't just had that in from Vulcan, it could have been already quite octopus. But she is working for Foxhound. So you think she had a part in the uprising? Or she could be working with some different group altogether. Oh boy, Naomi, Naomi, Naomi. Place her under arrest. What? She's betrayed us. She needs to be arrested and interrogated to find out who she's with. If she's one of their spies, then we're in big trouble. What do you mean? Oh, nothing. I mean, it's okay. It's not like she injected this link with anything in particular. Oh, shit. Does this have anything to do with the mysterious deaths of the DARPA chief and the arms tech president? I... I have no idea. Anyway, we cannot allow her to participate any further in this mission. Wait, wait a minute. Without her, we can't complete this mission. I knew it. You're hiding something. Give me some time. I'll try to get it out of her. Hurry then. Okay. We've got to figure out who she is and what she's doing here. I understand. Snake, give me some time. I don't have any time left for you. Yeah, again, and with Snake. Literally from the beginning, Snake was like, please don't keep secrets from me. And throughout this entire mission, yet again, the Colonel acted uh, exactly this way. I know that's the whole protocol scheme, you know, has, has to make you hide deliberately something that's high regarded, classified and everything. But Jesus Christ. I will say this. I kind of do agree with someone call me Johnny. Not going to spoil why, but the reason why they're keeping Snake in the dark feels just a little bit too contrived, honestly. Also, uh, 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 also, Vulcan's death feels like, like, ah, my friends, the Ravens, what? But you said you were, we were the enemy. Yeah, that's what I heard. Ed? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing behind. <laughs> Indeed. Seriously, seriously, Scar skeleton isn't even there. Like right after, like like seriously. It, apparently, the hyenas ate uh, ate him like fucking piranhas. Like. <laughs> well, given how they seem to be the piranhas of the land, go figure there. <laughs> and so and uh, and the hyenas apparently all died too because suddenly they're not there either. Okay, okay, okay. To be fair, according to Lion King 2, they just left for greener pastures, apparently. Hmm. Or who knows, maybe they all did die in the fires or whatnot. At least they died with their bellies full. I guess. Also, for going off the Timon and Pumbaa the series, they survived. <laughs> Or maybe it's well. Well, I, well, actually, Jove. According to Lion Guard, all the hyenas were were banished to the Outlands. Oh right, yes, that we are technically counting that as canon, aren't we? That wonderful bout of fan fiction. <laughs> My fan fiction um, is canon, I swear. You know, honestly, I was someone who was kind of mildly excited for when Lion Guard was first announced because, hey, more Lion King, you know, that could be good for the franchise and whatnot. And this was before Disney had kind of made a name for themselves and screwing the pooch with their old and beloved franchises. It's just... I still don't get why that show of all things was put on Disney Jr. Like, from what I've seen and heard, it does have some more mature elements, so... Why did they put that on Disney Junior? I'm still convinced Especially that they uh, make it out to be so an integral part of the franchise. I'm still convinced that the reason they put it on Disney Junior is because they realized it wasn't very good. Honestly, that might be it. Although it seems like that plan may have backfired them because it being on Disney Junior, I guess, helped it be popular enough to get not one, not two, but three flipping seasons. Mm-hmm. Mm. 
All right. So we got ourselves a mind detector. Nastasha. Let's save the game and get some... Yeah. But yeah, like I was saying, like, Lion Guard gets its full free seasons. Meanwhile, the poor Owl House gets its third season reduced to just three 44-minute specials, which, to be fair, maybe they'll be good. But it's like I said with Venture Bros, it's always better to have, like, a full season of episodes. Unless a lot of those episodes are just superfluous. Mm-hmm. Remind me sure, why did that happen to the third season of Owl House? There isn't a third season yet. Uh... No, 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 no. Uh, I've heard the word is that there's going to be a third season. It's just that it'll be three 44-minute specials as opposed yeah, that's to, right. know, full episodes. And I'm like, just why? Because Disney decided it doesn't fit their brand, which is complete horseshit. Mm -hmm. ah. Alas. If you've watched any of their stuff in the last, like, 10, 15 years or so, you know that's all shit. Yep. Yes. Yes, it is. Well, um, speaking of crap, hopefully Vulcan Raven doesn't leave too much lying around. He left some stain blood, there. Uh, only blood, seems. Mm -hmm. We even left a skeleton. Maybe, well, maybe it's, it's like the end of the villain in uh, We're Back Dinosaur Story. A bunch of ravens. Well, it's oh, already referenced it. Oh, you did? Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sorry. All right, see you over the next part. See ya. Yeah. See ya.